Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, and each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you've given me five talents. See, I've made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come share your master's joy. Then the one who received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I've made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant, and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have, have gotten it back with interest on my return? Now then take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. I suspect you ladies out there haven't got much flax and wool laying around. Times have changed. But the idea is the same. What the, the author of that proverb is saying, how blessed it is to have someone who is that heart of the home, who really sees to it that everything is kept orderly. Clothes. They have clothes. Now today it might be Blessed is the wife who can take all the kids to soccer practice and have everybody meet their schedules and do all that other stuff. But the real part of the matter is we find our joy in service. The idea is that if we do what we can and realize that we are drawn to serve each other, that's where we find our joy and our happiness. And notice what a blessing it was in that first reading for the husband to be able to put and give his heart to his wife. In other words, he can trust her. He can have her share his burdens. This is at the heart of what a stable society is. To really have a very strong family. And if we do that, we will strengthen our society because the family is under that. For our part, let us pray that God will inspire us to be that, that person of service and that we will appreciate the gifts that we have and put them to use. The psalmist reminds us, blessed are those who fear the Lord. And again, fear is not trepidation. It's not terror. It means a deep and profound respect. Can you imagine how much, how much easier life would be if children always listened to their parents? Think of how much pain they would be spared if they would listen to their parents. 
presuming they have good parents. Most parents want to be good, and they want the best for their children. But in our world, we have this, this push to say, oh, it's about what I want. I know what I need. I know what I want. Well, maybe. But more often than not, maybe not. And if we put our trust and fear in God, then we're going to try and strive and understand what he asks of us. And unlike parents who sometimes make mistakes and maybe aren't sure exactly what the best thing to do is, that's not the case with God. God knows exactly what the best thing to do is. And he lets it happen if we follow his commands, we will be in great shape. We will know happiness. Brother Spitzer, one of my uh, favorite guys to listen to, he uh, was talking about, he, he does a lot of work on happiness, uh, but he was also talking about prayer and how important it is for us to pray and put our trust in God. And he was saying, there's all kinds of ways to pray. He said, but a really good way to pray, one of the great prayers, is just help. We need God's help. We need God's help to get through this wretched pandemic. We need God's help to help our world value what is true, good, and beautiful. We can't change the heart of anyone else. It's impossible. It's hard enough to change our own hearts. But if we ask for God's help, we'll be able to forge a new disposition and be ready. Stay awake. Be sober. That's what Paul is telling the Christians in the second reading. He's saying all these people are worried about the end of times. I have people that are convinced that the end of time is upon us. They very well could be right. And I think it's important for us to be ready. But in the end, what does that mean? It means living our life for God and for our neighbor. If Christ comes back this afternoon or in 10,000 years, it really should have no bearing on how we're living our life after we leave Mass. We're called to be ready. We're called to live our life in such a way that we can Testify to all that is true, good, and beautiful. We need to do what we can to intensify our family life, deepen our love for each other, make our family strong, be those missionary disciples, invite others to Christ. It's all the same. It doesn't matter on one level. So don't lose heart really important. It's so easy to get so confused and caught up about the things around us. I don't know if you remember our good friend Carmine. He would serve Mass and he was very faithful coming to daily Mass. And, and he one day got me to read Tolstoy. And this Tolstoy, it's a very one of his shorter books called The Kingdom of God is Within You. And I can't say that I agree with everything Tolstoy was proposing in this book. It's kind of complicated, but I really did love this dimension of it. He was saying the way a society works is by its values and virtue. And at the beginning of the book, he used this little pericope, this little story. It was a small village, and the small village had a stream that ran through it, but the king wanted the water supply. So he ordered his troops to go seize the village and reroute the water supply so that he could have it for himself. And so he sent his soldiers out to do the task. And when the soldiers got there, they realized that this was wrong. We're not going to harm these people because this is an unjust law. We won't do it. They see on one level, as long as we are a virtuous people, it doesn't matter how bad the laws get. What matters is how we respond to all that is true, good, and beautiful. St. Thomas Aquinas says, the only laws we're bound to obey are the just ones. If there are laws that 
try and get us to be unjust, better to die than to obey those laws. God entrusts us with our life. There's that pithy little phrase, our, our, our life is God's gift to us. What we do with our life is our gift to God. And what is that? It's nothing grand, grandiose. If you're in a family, perfect your love for each other and your children. Let that love manifest the glory of God. Compassion, sacrifice, mercy, understanding, all these beautiful things. It doesn't have to be anything grand and great. It's just being faithful, being courageous, being virtuous, having the freedom to choose the true, the good, and the beautiful. Deepening your faith, reading the scriptures, praying every day. I hope everybody prays the rosary. Our world needs it desperately. Just pray. Deepen our relationship with God. Let us stay awake, be alert. For the Lord is coming. We don't know when. And that's what Paul was telling the people. Don't be concerned about times and seasons. Just be ready. And don't be afraid. Be afraid to offend God. But don't be afraid of God. Because he wants the best for us. He wants us to know the true, the good, and the beautiful. And we, as Christians, need to be that leaven in society that can bring peace and unity and understanding among the great division that exists in our world today. I pray that we can do it. And we do it by being sober and staying awake. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the only God who is faith. I believe in one God, God the Almighty, maker of heaven and all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, who got from through God, begotten, not made, not substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who incarnate, the Virgin Mary became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. The king will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. It proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. For the church that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all peoples, and that she may be a beacon of hope in these difficult times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations throughout the world, that they may strive to work together in the battle against this current pandemic, that they may never be motivated by greed or self-interest, but rather work for all that is true, good, and beautiful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Shirley Quickstand, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the health care workers, police officers, military personnel, and all first responders who take the risk to deal with our current crisis, that God protect them and console them in all that they do and endure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may use the gifts that we have to make the world a better place and prepare for Christ's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God, and through the intercessions of our Blessed Mother and all the saints, supernaturally intervene and end this pandemic and heal our nation and our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that their family members may grow in trust in God's loving mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all corruption in our world be uncovered both in the church and outside her ranks, 
those responsible for it lose their power or be converted, so that we can have leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that is in accord with natural law. We pray to the Lord. Lord, you are the prayer. Heavenly Father, through the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken, those kept in the silence of our hearts, answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Thank you.